guys and girls, it's Blackjack with 396 Guitars. We have a, a Music Man Stingray on the bench today. Ernie Ball Music Man, five-string bass, um, really nice-looking guitar, really nice-looking bass, uh, roasted maple. Um, it's got some nice features on it. We're gonna. It's a brand new instrument. The customer uh, asked me to do a setup on it. I've already taken a few measurements, and yeah, it's way out of whack, of course, because it's brand new. So let's get to work. Remember, if you dig what I'm doing, like and subscribe. Beautiful, beautiful bass guitar. Um, love roasted maple. It's all I put on my basses. Um, so the short and long of it is we're going to take the plastic off of this. We're going to de-string it and reuse these strings, but I want to oil the board because, yeah, it's pretty dry. Uh, when they say new guitar, you know, it could be new, brand new. But it may have been built two years ago, for all you know. Um, unless you're ordering direct from the factory, you never know. And I'm not going to run the serial numbers on it. It's new to him. Uh, I've already checked these batteries. These are the customer's batteries. Uh, I want to check before I forget the, the batteries in here. Have two Duracells. That's a good sign. Um, just to make sure, because yeah, batteries could be in there. For who knows how long? Who knows how long they were on the shelf before they put them in? That one's good. I like this kind of battery case. Very secure, not as flimsy as most. Nine and a half, very good. It seems like, you know, why would you bother checking the batteries? Yeah, well, because this guy's a gigging musician and I'm not gonna do a setup on his base and send him packing with crappy batteries. You know, why do we do it? Because we can. And these are going to be his. I'm going to take them with him. Uh, I like the blacked out stuff. Blacked out, blacked out keys, machines, blacked out string tree, blacked out uh, bridge assembly, blacked out saddles. Wow, he really, he really, I did a, another base for him at one point and he put all blacked out gear on it. So he must have been in heaven when he saw this one for sale. Everything seems pretty snug and tight on it. Yeah. California. Heritage. So, American made instrument. I would assume, but you know, you never know these days. Um, I checked the string height and it is monster, monstrously high. So, before we get too much in a twist over string height, we gotta check out where the neck relief is. You fella. Surprisingly, neck relief is dead on. So it makes me wonder why they have the string action so high. Makes me wonder. Because on the B, it's over 864. On the E, 864. Over 864 on the A, over, over. It's that that's just that's monstrously high for a bass guitar. On a five string, I will usually put the 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 low the B or the low E usually around 664 at the highest. If it will tolerate 564, I will put it that low. Every guitar is a little different. These should all be at 564. You try to keep them the same across the radius of the board, but with the low B, that B tends to rattle quite a bit, so you sometimes you have to bring it up slightly. Um, so 
I'm going to, before we do anything, I'm going to run down the string action. It's just too high. And I wonder, I'm going to guess this is probably way out of whack too. You know, the pickup is a mile away from the strings. I mean a mile away. No good. Let's bring this down because it might change that slightly. Wow, I got the string action so high. I don't understand. Oops. The guy at the Ernie Ball factory drunk that day or hung over. Who knows? I'm going to bring them all down the whole turn and a half. And then tune it and measure. Making sure that our saddles are staying level to the deck. Just heard a truck outside. It's, I'll bet my Seymour Duncan pickups are here. Now we're doing another Seymour Duncan swap on a different guitar. All right, let's see where we're at here. It's tight. These tuning machines feel really, really nice and secure, snug, not loose and wonky. So it's going to tune and it's going to hold. So all in all, it feels like a really well built instrument. Sometimes you can just tell. I like that. I'm going to adjust these now because they should hold with everything else. It's just really, really high action. It shouldn't be. It doesn't need to be that high. Working too hard. That's at six exactly. I'm going to leave it there. Just because I know I'm... B, low B, that's where it's going to want to live. Perfect. And I got them all close, but not exact. I was just guessing. Everybody says, oh, I want my action really low. No, you want your action set where it's supposed to be set. Don't say you want low action just because it sounds cool. Don't say you want low action just because it sounds cool. Or you heard somebody else say it. Leave it to to the guys that know what they're doing to set it where it's supposed to be. And if you want it higher or lower after that, you go in here, just like I just showed you, and you do equal increments. If you're going to go up, go eighth of a turn, eighth of a turn, all the way across, and then tune up and play it like that for a while. If you don't know how to measure what you're looking for. Same if you're going down, if you're trying to lower your action, you know, okay, go lower if you want until it starts to buzz and then you're going to be in trouble. So do it in equal increments if you must play around with that. But my recommendation is let somebody do it that knows what the hell they're doing. That's just me.
These three seem like the first fret action is a little high, but I would rather it be a little high, and I mean a very little bit, than a little too low, because if it goes low, then you're really going to get buzzing. So that got that closer. I got that almost where I like it. Almost. Oh, I like that. See, just by bringing up the string action slightly, that one needed just a little bit of an adjustment up. Okay, so we know the neck relief is good, which kind of surprises me. Uh, usually on a, a new instrument that's just been shipped, if it hasn't been set up, the neck is usually bone straight and you need to put some relief in it, but it does not need it. That's set, that's set. Where is our intonation? It's a little flat. Not enough to get in a twist over though. like it. No, we're good. I'm going to leave that. I can live with that. Um, we're going to take the plastic off of here, but first... So don't sell that guitar. You're never going to sell that guitar just because you're falling in love with the five strings. Stop it. Yeah. This is a punchy bass. Really punchy bass. I like it. this guitar back to him. I might just keep it, change my number. <clears throat> yeah. I, I don't think he's getting this guitar back. I'm going to keep it. I, I changed my mind. I'm not going to get it back. I'm going to keep it. Is that wrong? I'll let you guys decide. Yeah. 
I can't stand a dry board. I love this roasted maple though. A lot of character in it in the wood grain it's showing on the top on the fretboard. Beautiful. You really got a fine example of this instrument. Sometimes you don't know. I think you ordered it online. And you never know until the thing shows up, gets in your driveway, shows up at your door. <clears throat> this treatment will last him a year or so. By the way, he's not a, a, an habitual five-string player. It's something new to him. So, I told him go for it. I'm not a five-string player by any means. I just never have had the need for it. I always keep a second bass or a third bass in different tunings. But I'll tell you, having the fifth string, boy, it facilitates a lot of interesting musical uh, versatility without changing instruments or having different tunings. You always got that fifth string in the way too. Sorry, got to, I got to put the caveat in there. And usually, five-string basses are big honking instruments. This one is not. It's actually pretty light, um, and the neck isn't like monstrously much wider than I would say a P bass neck. Of course, it's a little wider, but not much. So. That looks and feels a lot better already. Do not need to do anything with the frets. They're shiny, brand new. They don't have any wear or tarnish on them at all. So we're golden there. But this has to be addressed. Got to get the condom off. means you have to take all of these guys off. Stand by. All right, so yeah, we got the screws off the pick guard. Took the knots off the control pots. And we're going to hope against hope that this is all cut out better than a fender is. Looks like maybe I didn't have to take the screws out because it looks and appears as though they cut out around them nicely, but I took them off out of habit more than anything. How many times have you seen somebody playing a strat or any kind of guitar that's relatively new or even Oh, it's been playing it for a hundred years and there's still plastic around the screws. Ah, music man got it right. Ernie Ball got it right. They perforated the plastic so I didn't have to take the screws out, but that's all right. No big deal. Let's see if it comes off of these. It did. Ah. And it popped right off beautifully. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. So you live and you learn. I guess Fender is still behind the times. Well, the last one I did, I think it was a Fender, and they actually started doing the same thing, perforating the, the plastic around the screw, not putting it on there, and the screw goes on and holds the plastic, so yeah. It only took them a hundred years to figure that out. I'm going to pause while I put the rest of this together. And then we're going to start restringing it and go through the setup again just to make sure everything is good. And then we're going to play it a little bit just for fun. 
<clears throat> getting ready to restring it, but I want to just lightly clean this so that oh, I forgot a screw. some of the adhesive off so it'll wipe off better each time he cleans it or brings it in. Stand by while I put the rest of these on, then we're going to remeasure and just wipe it down. But pretty much, we're getting in the home stretch already. So let's tune it up. We got the strings back on. Um, overall, I, I would give this a, a B plus. Not because I don't like the guitar, because I love the guitar. But a B plus in just the way they they had the guitar set up. Um, either the store or the outlet where he got it. If they did any work on it, I wouldn't trust them to do any more work because two things, uh, the string action was, again, to repeat myself, was just m way, way too high. Almost double what it should be. The neck relief is fine. But the second thing that I'm not really crazy about is the, I had to, putting these strings back on, I had to actually force the wrap down lower because they don't have enough string going around. Um, one, two, three, four. So the E, A, D, and G, there's not enough wraps going around there. There's not enough string left. They didn't measure them and take time to make sure that the wraps were all the way, you know, concentric, and at least two of them. There's only one on there, one, one and a half, one and a half. I, you, you, on a bass, you want to see two. The, each, the B string is the only one that has one and a half and starting on two. So it's enough because that string is so fat, that's all it will fit on the tuning peg, but the rest of these should have two. And they don't. So I pushed the string down lower to get the right break angle, especially on the, the E. I'm not really digging the guitar though, but um, I give the overall the instrument. I give I give I give it an A, an A plus because yeah, it's it's a jamming instrument. I'm digging on it. If I was in the in the market for a, a four or a five string. I like that. I 
I don't know what the price point is on this. I didn't ask on purpose. I don't want to know, but I can guess. I mean, we all know these, you know, these California or USA made guitars, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, you're going to pay up a little bit, but you know what you're getting? Much, much higher quality materials. Um, wood, routing, fit and finish, gear that's on the instrument itself. Yeah, you, you, you're getting the good stuff. Electronics. Okay, I gotta bring up the I gotta bring up the D slightly. <clears throat> Got it a little too low. You know what I mean a little, it's showing five sixty fourths, but I want it to be able to see the five sixty fours line. It's just below it. Yahtzee. And the last thing I want to check is my own work to make sure that all of the saddles are as level as you can get them with the eye. Good, good, good. I don't like that one. Bring that side down slightly and then this side up slightly. G slightly tilted there. I'm digging on that. And then of course you gotta remeasure because you just kind of boogered them a little bit. Get them where you like them, but make sure that they're level to the deck on the guitar. I watch guys go with their they get their radius out and they want the saddles to show a radius. No, you want the saddles flat. Level with the deck of the guitar, the body. You can take that to a bank. I like it. I like it. Beautiful. Yahtzee. That instrument is ready to play. And it's ready to gig. I stick my reputation on it. I got a crappy reputation though. At least I used to in a previous life. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm going to turn this thing way down because it doesn't like it on the camera mic. I'm digging this guitar.
he nailed it when he got this one. And he, and just like like I said, when you order stuff online, and I'm pretty sure he got this through an online store, a reputable, you know, supply house, uh, instrument supply house. Um, we all know him. I'm not going to mention any names. Um, but it's a well-known one. And you never know still what you're going to get when it comes. You, you just sometimes you don't know until the instrument shows up. And instruments are like fingerprints. Each one is different. They can have the same, two, put three of these same identical guitars on the bench, and there will be subtle differences in them in the way they play, the way they sound, things like that. So um, I... I think he nailed it with this one. He got not only lucky, but he picked the right combo with the blackout gear. And I know that's what this customer digs on. Um, the, the, the roasted maple neck is something I taught him, and I'm glad that he picked up on that. And that's what he got. Um, just a beautiful instrument. Uh, he's going to get a lot of years of good, solid performance out of this instrument. It's Blackjack with 396 guitars. I uh, hope you're digging on the uh, Music Man by Ernie Ball. It's a Stingray 5-string. Um, this thing's badass. I I'm giving it an A-plus as an instrument. As far as the setup, man, I'd give it a B, maybe a B-plus. Uh, but we fixed all that, and there's nothing wrong with this one. Go make some music.